Hello? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Samsung's not here. I can take a message, though. What's that? 20 years ago called and said they want their form factor back. Okay. Okay, yeah. I can pass that on. The Galaxy Z Flip 3 is a phone. A smartphone. It does all the other stuff that smartphones do, only some of them not as well. But wait, there's something special about the Galaxy Z Flip. You see, it folds in half. Yes, we have entered year three of Samsung's campaign to shove folding phones down our throats. Folding phones have become the overcooked Brussels sprouts of smartphones. Nobody wants it, but Samsung is telling us that it's good for us, so we should eat it. Yes, they fold. And yes, that's different than other phones out there that don't fold. But is that really an excuse for existing? Actually, I have a Samsung folding phone uh, somewhere here in a drawer from 2004 that looks exactly like this, only it has buttons on the outside to do uh, play and pause and forward and back for the music. And then it also has a little screen here that'll give me the notifications. And the camera actually like rolls around so you can do front, you can do back, you can open it up and it'll do the same thing. As much as people want to tell us that this is something new, uh, it, it's not. Now the Galaxy Z Flip 3 can take pictures open and closed. In fact, one of its redeeming qualities is that you can actually take pictures here on the front like this. You see, there's my teleprompter. So you can actually take pictures like using the regular selfie, uh, the front facing camera and do the selfie. So that's good. I'll do, I'll do it right now. Boop, boop. And actually those pictures look pretty good. Just look at what I, at, I just took. The camera takes pretty good quality pictures in good light, like what I have here at my uh, filming station, but in only okay light, it takes kind of crap pictures like this. I had the Samsung S21 Ultra earlier this year, and uh, it had one of the best cameras that I've actually ever used on a smartphone, which surprised me because Samsung cameras are really usually passable, but not in the same league as, say, the, the Pixels and the iPhones of the world. The Z Flip 3 reassures me that the quality of Samsung cameras is still just north of acceptable. And the S21 Ultra was probably just a, a, a happy accident, let's say. Samsung is now back to their underachieving ways and all is right with the world. But what about the rest of the phone? I mean, no one really cares about the camera or anything. Like that. How the phone functions is what really matters here. The screen looks nice. We've got 120 Hertz refresh rate, which the kids tell me is all the, all the rage, the bees knees as far as screens go. And the screen looks great it, as long as you ignore the trench that runs horizontally across the screen where the hinge has to be. And you can ignore that, I guess. But why would you remains to me a, a little bit of a mystery because there are myriad cheaper, better phones out there that don't have this, how shall we say, feature. But it folds, but it folds I, hear I hear you say. You say. It, folds. it folds. Folding is the future. Folding is cool. But, 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 but wait, just because something folds doesn't mean it's any good or should get a pass on not being so good. It's still a thousand dollar phone. And as such, it should be as good as the other thousand dollar phones and fold. Not be okay, but it folds. To put it plain and simply, uh, this phone is not nearly as good as the S21 phones that Samsung released earlier this year. And if this isn't as good as those, then why should you buy this? Samsung had to have moved heaven and earth to get the price of this phone down to $1,000. But if the phone isn't as good as their other phones in the same price range, then I'm not inclined to give it a pass and I don't know why you should be either. It does the same things that my Samsung from 2004 did. It folds, it makes calls, it, uh, you know, plays me, you know what I'm saying. The Z Flip 3 is an okay phone that folds, which might be enough for some folks, but it shouldn't be. I might even be inclined to tell you to go ahead and get something different if you want something bad enough to accept a less than awesome phone for a feature that is pretty much um, useless to the actual usage of the phone. But the Z Flip 3 is not just an okay phone with a mediocre camera that folds in half. <laughs> it's those things and a phone 
with terrible battery life. Terrible battery life beyond any conception. The first few days I had this phone, I couldn't get through a half day without hitting the 25% mark on the battery, which is officially where I get battery anxiety and I feel the need to, to charge. 25% battery at say like 3 p.m. is not acceptable in 2021. People told me, just wait for the adaptive battery feature to do its thing, and I waited for two weeks and the battery never got better. In fact, in the time it's taken me to write this script, and that's kind of meta because I'm not writing the script right now, but, but in the time it took me to write this script, uh, the battery went from 48% to 42% and right now it sits at 39% and all I've done is pick up the phone and unfold it a few times. In this age where most phones costing more than $500 are generally amazing and perform without any major flaws, bad battery is pretty much unforgivable, especially in a phone like this. I understand that this phone is special. It's pushing the, pushing envelope. the envelope. It's moving tech moving forward tech. and whatever else the tech apologists out there will throw out to forgive its shortcomings. But if you're a regular person looking to buy a phone that you can use for the next few years, two years, whatever it is, the Galaxy Z Flip 3 is not it. I haven't even mentioned the fact that the whole folding screen thing is still a significant long-term question. Will it last? I don't know. Nobody knows. Anybody who tells you they know doesn't know. And what about the battery? If the battery is this bad now, how will it be in 12, 18, 24, 36 months? Will you be charging it by lunchtime? It's possible. We used to put up with this stuff, this folding stuff, because it was like the best we could do. We used to put up with bad battery life for smartphones because it was the best that we could do. But that's not the case anymore. And we shouldn't have to compromise on battery life for what amounts to a parlor trick. Honestly, like other than being able to like check your notifications and and take a and take a picture with a small screen, this folded form factor is pretty darn useless and you can't do anything with the phone without opening it up and there are people in my first impressions video who are like you say you forget to, to fold it well you're just a dumb old guy i forget to fold it because a the folding doesn't do anything and b it's only useful in this <laughs> form factor an okay phone with an okay camera and terrible battery life but it folds in half it's not good enough in 2021. Getting below the $1,000 price point to $999 removed the barrier of entry for a lot of people who might have wanted to try a folding phone, but for the exorbitant cost of the phone. But now that barrier has been mitigated and we have to judge the phone on its own merits. And for me, the Galaxy Z Flip has left me wanting. Maybe someday it will be all this and a bag of chips, but it isn't right now. And if you want my painfully honest opinion, don't buy this thing unless you're just one of those people who buys things because you, you feel like checking it out. I don't know. I mean, don't. No, don't. Spend the money on a Galaxy S21 Plus or splurge a couple of hundred more dollars on an S21 Ultra. You will get a full-featured, fully matured, really great phone that doesn't compromise on anything as opposed to a compromised phone that just kind of folds in half. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Thanks so much for being here. I really do appreciate it. We'll have a boisterous discussion, I'm sure. I'm sure that everybody will have something to say, and I look forward to it. Once again, thank you so much for being here. My name is Jason, sometimes known as the JTL. This is painfully honest tech. Tech so honest it hurts. Until next time, I'm out.